Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Fung. Intermittent fasting has gotten really popular for weight loss in the last few years, often topping the Google search trends. But is it just the latest diet fad? Find out more, but before we start, make sure you like and subscribe to this video. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to reveal Sarah's fasting regimen that allowed her to lose 80 pounds. Let's get right to it. Fads are like trends or crazes. They're intense and they're widely shared enthusiasms, but they tend to be very, very short-lived. Think about fanny packs and fidget spinners, for example. And there's been lots of fad diets over the years. You can think about things like the baby food diet, for example, or cabbage soup diet, uh, diets for your blood type, and all different kinds of diets. And some of them work, some of them don't. They get very popular for a short period of time. And then they sort of disappear as everybody sort of realizes that maybe they're not so good in the long term. So is fasting just another fad diet? So if you look at the trends in how often we eat over the last few years, you can look at the NHANE survey, which is a large American survey, which measures many things, but among them, how often Americans are eating. So what you can see is in that 1977 to 1978, the vast majority of Americans are just eating three times a day. That is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And over the decades, it slowly changed. So by 2004, 2005, most Americans are need, now eating close to six times a day, almost double what they were just a generation ago. So not only are they eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but they're eating breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. They're filling their entire day with eating, in other words. So what's happened over these last few decades is the disappearance of the daily fasting period. In the 1970s, people were eating generally dinner at 6 p.m. and then eating breakfast at 8 a.m. So there's actually a 14-hour period of fasting that happened every single night without even thinking about it. By the 2000s, people are eating constantly throughout the period. And so when they get up, people are saying, oh, you have to eat as soon as you get up. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And they weren't stopping eating until they went to bed. So that fasting period has gradually gone away. So what's actually the fad is not the fasting. The fasting has always been there. In fact, it's even in the English language. The word breakfast is the meal that breaks your fast. And you can't break a fast if you're not fasting. What the real fad is then is this constant eating that we see that's been only since the 2000s which has coincided with the explosion of the obesity epidemic. So we can go back in history and really look at what people used to think of this period of not eating, what they thought about fasting. Was it the fad? And you can go all the way back to the ancient Greeks. So if you go back to Hippocrates, he was called the father of modern medicine. And he was a great believer in fasting. He used to prescribe it with or without medicinal tea for all kinds of things. In his books, he wrote about treating fevers, diseases in crisis states, colds, flus, arthritis, and all kinds of metabolic disorders. In fact, he thought so much about fasting that he called it the physician within. And the reason for that is that when people get sick, you can see that they lose their appetite. So if you get the flu, for example, you don't want to eat. And that's a natural reaction because it's a so-called fasting instincts. And you see it not just in humans, but in dogs and cats and everybody because you're bolstering the ability of the immune system to fight off infections with the fasting. But it wasn't just limited to Hippocrates. In fact, most of the ancient world thought this way. And most of the major religions also have built into their practices, days of fasting. So it wasn't just one or two people that thought that fasting should be a part of the natural way you eat. It was most of the world. Some of the most famous in history 
have also endorsed fasting. Benjamin Franklin, for example, renowned for his wide skill and knowledge in so many different areas, said, the best of all medicines is resting and fasting. Mark Twain said, a little starvation can really do more for the average sick man than can the best medicines and the best doctors. So, what you can see is that when you're looking at dietary fats, it's actually the opposite of what we expected. Intermittent fasting and fasting in general is not a fad. It is literally the oldest dietary intervention known. What's a fad is the eating all the time. Fasting has been around for several thousands of years, whereas constant eating has only been around for a few tens of years, 30, 40 years, during which time we've seen an explosion of obesity. So this idea that you have to eat all the time to be healthy, this idea that you have to eat, 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 even to lose weight, that's the fad. And it, it translates into the way we even teach our kids. So in the past, we would tell our kids not to snack. For example, when I grew up, if you wanted an after-school snack, your mom would say, no, you're gonna ruin your dinner. If you wanted a bedtime snack, she would say, no, you should have ate more at dinner. And if you're a bad boy, you got sent to your bed without dinner, which meant that you weren't fasting for 14 hours, you were fasting for 20 hours. And that's just the way it was. So when we look back at the history of dietary trends, fasting is not the new kid on the block. Fasting is the tried and the true. Sarah struggled with weight her entire adult life. She never seemed to be able to lose weight and she always tried everything in moderation because that's what everybody told her, but it didn't work. So one day on her doctor's advice, she read The Complete Guide to Fasting and it made sense to her. So she started a low carbohydrate diet and added some intermittent fasting. That really seemed to click she is finally able to lose the weight and she's down 80 pounds. She's getting very close to her goal weight and while she didn't have any health problems, she was pretty sure she was on the way to type two diabetes. So what fasting regimen did she use? On most days of the week, Sarah used either a 16 or an 18 hour fasting period. This is a strategy known mostly as time restricted eating. And once a week, she would throw in a longer fast. Sometimes she would do multiple days of longer fast, maybe once a month. She might do alternate daily fasting where she would eat on alternate days. What was her biggest tip? Mix it up. So in order to keep things fresh, you can alternate the fasting periods. There's different ways to do this. You can alter several things. You can alter how long you're fasting for. And in this case, Sarah would alter 16 hours, 18 hours sometimes, sometimes 24 hours, sometimes 36 hours but it would change so you keep yourself fresh. But you can also alter other things like what's allowed during the fast. So perhaps you might do a very strict water fast one time and perhaps another time you might do something more lenient. But the key is to keep your body guessing, keep yourself from getting stuck in a rut and change it up. You'll find that the weight loss comes a lot easier if you do that. Thanks for watching everybody. Remember to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. I'll see you next week.